coming next to the concept of angular acceleration in some sense you have already seen this just like whenever you have velocity you can take the time derivative of velocity to get acceleration similarly when you have angular velocity of a coordinate system or a rigid body then you can differentiate it to get an angular acceleration but let's understand this little bit more carefully so we again begin with a coordinate system which is rotating and whose unit vectors are changing with time and typically this coordinate system is attached to a rigid body so this forms the bfcs of the rigid body so that's my coordinate system the blue coordinate system that i have over here and let it be rotating with respect to some another coordinate system given by e0 and defined by the capital ei unit vectors i will uh, not say whether the red coordinate system is changing or not with time uh, because of the comment i made in the previous slide that the it is immaterial as long as you interpret your time derivatives carefully so all that we know is that in the red coordinate system there is a person there is an observer who is sitting and watching the blue coordinate system which in this course is usually the bfcs of the of a rigid body and he sees that the bfcs e is rotating at some angular velocity omega of e with respect to e0 right and based on that he knows that he can use this formula according to this formula if both an observer in the rigid body and an observer in the red frame in the observer frame if both of them are following the time evolution of some vector u of t then the rate of change of this vector u as measured in the red coordinate system will be the same as the rate of change of the vector u measured in the blue coordinate system plus a correction factor which in which the rotation rate of the rigid body of the blue coordinate system enters so this is the formula that we have just understood okay so we are going to use this formula but first let us go ahead and define the angular acceleration of the rigid body the angular acceleration of a rigid body or of a coordinate system attached to the rigid body its bfcs is simply the time derivative of the angular velocity vector that's it the only thing that needs to be understood here is this is time di differentiation is with respect to an observer who is sitting in the red coordinate system so question then becomes how do i represent this in the most convenient manner it will turn out as we go on that computations are most easily carried out in the body fixed coordinate system of the rigid body that we are studying so that's the important frame that means we would like to have this quantity with us alpha of e with respect to e0 we would like this the components of this vector in the bfcs which is to say that i would like to know the time derivative of omega and express it in terms of the coordinate system of attached to the rigid body that's what i would like to have okay you should immediately note that there is no reason to believe that this is the same as taking the time derivative of the components of the angular velocity in e you don't know this okay this is a question mark to is it true or is it not true usually it is not true because that is what this formula is telling you okay let's go to the next page and rewrite the formula and understand it so the formula says that u dot of t is u open circle or u ring u open dot of t plus omega e with respect to e0 cross u of t now suppose you were to evaluate this entire expression 
in E in the body fixed coordinate system then you will get the d by dt of u in the BFCS is u open dot in BFCS plus omega e e0 cross u in BFCS and now you will quickly notice that this quantity is actually the same as the time derivative of the vector u or the components of the vector u in the BFCS and this is because if you write u as ui ei then u open dot which is the derivative of u with respect to an observer sitting with the BFCS for that observer ei is constant so therefore u open dot is really u i dot e i but u i dot this is precisely that ok. So, in general there is no reason to believe that the components of the time derivative of the vector u in the BFCS is the same as the time derivative of the components of the vector in the BFCS because there is this correction factor. So, coming back to our original question, the what we want is the angular acceleration, the components of the angular acceleration in the BFCS, which is equal to the components of the time derivative of the angular velocity vector computed in the BFCS. And the question we are asking is, is it equal to the time derivative of the components of the angular velocity vector in the BFCS. Generally it is not, but let us explore the question a little bit further. So, understand the question a bit further what we do is that we go back to this formula this one and what are and put this vector u to be the angular velocity vector of the blue frame with respect to the observer frame. When you do that you will notice that if u is omega then this term goes away and what you get is omega dot is the same as omega open dot. This is a mini miracle because let us write it down again over here. So, what we have just shown is that omega dot is equal to omega open dot. So, omega dot is d by dt of omega and if we compute its components in E, these are the same as the components of omega open dot in E, but we have just argued here that this is simply the time derivative of the components of omega in E. So, in other words the answer to our question over here that whether you can take the time derivative out of the square brackets is yes you can, but only for the angular velocity vector. Immediately it has a couple of applications. So, if you have a rigid body B, here is my rigid body B who has BFCS E as I have drawn over here which is rotating with angular velocity omega as this one with respect to the observer. Then the angular acceleration of the rigid body which is measured by the observer and which is measured by the body itself are exactly the same. This is the angular velocity of the rigid body as observed by the observer frame and this is the angular acceleration of the rigid body as observed on its own. So, that is the first application. The second application is basically the formula that we have written over here that and it's, it has a practical application. As I said usually we want the components of the angular acceleration in the body fixed coordinate system. This quantity is exactly this quantity 
this is usually hard why is it hard because if you were to go ahead and write omega as omega i e i and then take the time derivative then usually you will get two components you will get things like omega i dot e i and you will get omega i e i dot but what we have just shown is that for the special case of omega you can take this time derivative out of the brackets and you can get this that means over here that this is simply omega i dot e i indeed omega i dot e i is just this quantity as we have shown multiple times but if these two are equal it must mean that this quantity is zero and i will leave that as a homework for you to show in some sense with all the manipulations we have done on this slide this is what we have proved but perhaps you can try it again more directly right so let's move on now 